here to start the engine sometime soon, Erica. <laughs> of all of us being here at this time. It's improbable, and yet here we are, together. Hold on to your saddles. The champion was crowned in the basketball world, and if you're anything like me, you're already thinking about the football season. For the football season, I'm partnering up with DraftKings for their best ball contest. The contest has a $10 million prize pool, which is DraftKings' largest best ball contest ever. Sign up now using my promo code SMOKE and get your first $10 entry free back in DK dollars once the draft is finished. Managing fantasy football takes a lot of work every week. With DraftKings' best ball contest, you'll be able to enjoy the fantasy football action without the need to manage your team. So what are you waiting for? Head to DraftKings. DraftKings app now, sign up with the code SMOKE and start playing best ball today. Enter the DraftKings $10 million best ball contest and you'll get your first $10 entry back in DK dollars. Only at DraftKings with the code SMOKE. If you haven't already heard, it's a smooth sack summer. That's right, this summer, keep your balls cool and still look hot with Manscaped. Dive head first into smooth sack summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with our code SMOKE. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to prepare that summer body. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7000 RPM motor and a new multi-function on and off switch that can engage a travel lock. And it gives you the ability to turn on a 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Did I mention the trimmer is waterproof too? Use the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and stay cool in the heat. With the soothing aloe vera formula, it is best in the business for below the waist freshness and this clear drying formula will keep you looking good while smelling good. Manscaped has even threw in two free gifts with their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. Finally, take a look at Shears 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. This kit includes stainless steel nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SMOKE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code SMOKE at manscaped.com. It's a smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board and get left behind. Welcome back. Uh, Jack, it's, it's a good day. Man, what are you telling? a list. I mean, we have just, uh, I, what's the thing? That the, the Fast and Furious 10 is the theme, I guess we're going with? Man, we just taking off in this space, Fast and Furious. That's you what's going it on. Yeah, okay. we the Fast and Furious in this space. So yeah. now we want to welcome to the show uh, someone we've been, listen, we've been trying to get this dude for a minute, man. My dog. Trying to get this dude for a minute. Pulled up a snug at my wedding without a... Without a thought, and then disappeared again, and then disappeared in, in, in the, the night. night. I was like, I, 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 I'm he was like, gone. Hey, he was cool in, came back the... on, just disappeared through the curtain. We never <laughs> see him again. <laughs> he killed it, though. Man, welcome to the show, man, Tyrese. Man, we appreciate my you, brother. Man. Man. Great man. to finally catch up with honor. you. Honor. Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Multi-talented. Honored and grateful to be here. Believe it. Singer, songwriter, actor. Um, what is it like when you you think about? where it started to where you are right now. Do you ever get a chance or are you constantly trying to see what's next? Uh, man, I tell people uh, that where I'm from, what I've seen, what I've been exposed to throughout my childhood and teenage years before I got on, nothing about what I see in my dreams will ever compete with how blessed and life altering I see when I wake up. I mean, look at my life, man. You know, like when I go to sleep, I'll be so tired. It's pitch black, man. You know what I mean? I don't, not, I dream with my eyes open. So I I just see shit, man. I, I just be like, wow, man. Like, my my whole thing got off the ground from a 30 second commercial 
So we've already been sitting here longer than 30 seconds. It was supposed to be over for me already. So every day that I'm able to wake up and see and experience and meet and, you know, just go places and catch a vibe, man, it's, it's life altering. Hold on. I don't know who's making noise over there with the yeah. potato chips. Yes. Who is it, please? But Who is I, it? Who is it? I promise you, that shit, you would think that I got on some headphones right now with how loud that shit is. Oh, my. Like, I promise these thoughts are expensive. I want to reach them all. I've been waiting on this shit right here, <laughs> yeah. man. Please. Yeah. Please with the Dorito bag. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Sorry. Yeah, so, you know, I, I just really feel like, you know, I think the moment you take your access for granted, your access would no longer be granted. You know what I mean? So I, I literally, like, it ain't about slab, rich, money, mansion, this and that, man. I can't believe any of this, which allows me to really, like, like, wow, you know, every day. Um yeah, and I just hope that never ends, man. I don't ever want to get too familiar with being blessed. Mm. Take us back to, you said the commercial kind of changed your life. Uh, take us back to that process, how that came about, uh, and what it was like in that moment. And obviously, you never thought it would be what it is, but walk us back through that process. Uh, I was, I, I, they called my high school. Um, how were you? 16. Um, said they was looking for a male black 16 through 18. They had already been to like three other states, uh, you know, New York, Atlanta. And then the school that I went to was a, a school, you know, with a lot of performing arts. A lot of folks had graduated, you know, the whole horn section of Earth, Wind and Fire, saxophone player, Gerald Albright, a legend named Patrice Russian, the drummer and Dugu Chancellor. Um, so a bunch of folks that y'all may not know or maybe, but they were all legends, came out of the school. So when they started making phone calls, it was like, let's 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 call the schools where they normally have singers and, and really talented Some people. Talent. So I was at Locke High School um, in, in South Central, um, got the phone call. My music teacher got the call, Reggie Andrews, rest in peace. And uh, yeah, he was like, yeah, they just called and, you know, hey man, I think everything's about to change for you. I'm looking at him like, shit, I'll take anything over $20. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, whatever it is, if it's more than $20, nigga, we out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's been yeah, to sit down on the back of that bus, man, and and I don't know. I got so many different things, Matt, that just kind of, it's kind of hard to answer that question because it's like, I bet I, you know, if I can simplify, it would be imagine or remember your prom. You got your suit on, shit is rented, it's nice, you got your patent leather, you know what I mean? <laughs> and if you were blessed enough to have a limo, even if you rolled with one of the homies, mm -hmm. sun yeah. roof is out, Life the limo, and everything is like a fantasy. But you know at a certain point, this limo's got to go back. <laughs> Suit's got to go back. Suit's got to go back. Shoot, everything, shoes. you know, you go back to being a pumpkin. <laughs> Man, I've been in this limousine for 25 mm. years, bro. Been in this limo for 25, man. I'm like... I almost convinced myself early on because of the level of trauma and dysfunction that I was born in, there was no way for me to ever think that it would be more than a 30 second, five minute high, you know? So, I, like, my life felt, my career felt like a rental car, felt like a limo. It was, it was like fleeting. Ain't no fucking way this limo gonna stay here with the way I'm looking and what we riding in and the sunroof and what we doing. We got eight hours, wrap it up, it's over. I've been in this limo for 25, man. I can't believe it. So I had to shift from, you know, so humble and so grateful, wow. You know, I had to get out of the wow of the rental car and say I own the car. 
This is mine. God ain't going to take it away and give it to nobody else. So now you got to negotiate on the car different. You got to think about get off your goofy shit and really think like if you don't get out of your so humble and so grateful, stay humble, but don't lose your value and understanding your position and disposition when it comes to deals and deal terms. Don't take what they offering. Especially when I had kids, man, everything was like, shit, I was negotiating for me now. Nigga, it's, it's y'all versus my two daughters. I feel bad for whoever's on the other side of the deal. Because uh, it ain't about us no more once, once them angels get here, man. Like, don't embarrass yourself from that not from thinking that next week is promised. Like I got next week to get my shit together. Yeah, got it. So yeah, that's 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 my answer, man. Mm. Take us back to Watts. What was going on in Tyrese Gibson's head as a young kid? I you know, I know you got your mother, you was raised by your mother, you had siblings. And your brother just got out recently, right? Uh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in Vegas. Tyrone. <laughs> you <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Big bro, man. Yeah. Bet on one, but he pulling it together, man. I'm proud of him. Um, yeah, so honestly, man, typical stories, pretty much every level of dysfunction, every example of, you know, it's all laid out. You, you going to jail, you're going to get shot, you know, drive by, bloods, crips, Mexican gangs, rivals. One block away from hoods that your hood don't get along with, and you know I'm I'm in the hood as a good guy. I never banged in my life, never sold nothing. I'm not gonna paint that picture, but you know I grew up in and around monsters. That's doing that shit for real every day, and so sometimes they'll they'll take your head off just from where you live and who you know, and so I, I woke up expecting to die. I woke up. Like, I pretty much know what the outcome of this shit is going to be because I see it and I'm around it every day. I don't care if you're a good guy. I've seen too many of the homies that ain't banging, ain't slanging. Dead. Playing basketball on a Wednesday. They dead on Thursday. We doing fundraisers trying to raise money to bury the homie because he's fucking 12 years old. Nobody had insurance in place. <laughs> that wasn't the plan. So everything about kind of feeling like, yeah, I'm in this, but I feel different. I'm in this, but I'm not of this. And I didn't know I could sing at the time, but I knew that it didn't really feel like putting on that blue or that purple or whatever the homies do. I didn't feel like... I ain't really I don't really know if I had the heart to like really step in it on that level. I ain't really know if I was finna be out there with the Ziploc bags and 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 pushing it on that level and uh, you know carrying and I don't I don't know if that was in the cards for me like that. So to see it to be around it to feel it is to to know what is yours? Like I, I know I, because the example is there. Like, you can you can put the chucks on, and it just never felt like some shit that was real for me. But at the same time, I didn't know what I was gonna be. Like I wasn't the best athlete. I was cool, but I wasn't wasn't killing niggas on the court. I wasn't, it was like oh, yeah, I had the, nobody show one, up one, to one, see one me play. One of the play. few honest ones that really, <laughs> yeah, when they yeah. talk about what they used to do. <laughs> everybody everybody else should have went to the league. Everybody yeah. was everyone nice. Else, everybody everybody should have went to the league. Everyone else we interviewed that don't play hoop, should, yeah. they should have been in the yeah. league. Yeah. Yep. Appreciate your honesty. Carry right, on. Man, listen. <laughs> listen, man. I might get, you might got a strong three piece in a biscuit out of me. Like, I'm tired <laughs> as a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to give a nigga my best AI. <laughs> yeah, so. That's the one. Uh, but yeah, when I seen the nigga sing the national anthem, I was like, yo, that's all right. 
What's what's that? <laughs> That's all right. Let me get that. Let me look into this right here, man. That's all right. You know what I mean? Everybody standing up, full attention. No one's distracted. Everybody got their hand on their heart. I think I can do this. <laughs> yeah, but nah, it's uh, all my homies. Like even my best homie that's here with me. You know, eight years old. My nigga Kenyatta, man. Top top athlete, man. You know, all my boys, man, I go to their cribs, they got the whole wall of trophies. I'd be like, I don't really know if this in the cards for me <laughs> like that to be out here. So I just was lost, felt different, didn't really felt feel like I belong. But then just, what do you have in mind, God, you know? And the homies go to jail and they come out. They trying to make it sound like it's that shit. Nigga, what's up in that moon? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not fucking with any of that dialogue that came from. <laughs> you got, I'm cool, you got niggas, bro. you got niggas yeah. happy. I'm cool. More happy to celebrate the homie getting out of jail from doing five or ten, but when somebody graduates from high school. You know, they got three homies at that event. It's, we 400 deep when the homie get out. I don't really know if I'm, I don't know, bro. It, it just like super early on, shit was just like, ah, like what the, what, what is this that I'm feeling? Cause I know what I'm supposed to feel. I see it, I'm around it every day. The Impala, the Curly Top, <laughs> Snoop, Dre, NWA, Straight out of Compton, I'm in Watts, right next door. This is this is what it is. God just had other plans, man. So imagine me not being grateful when nothing about my life looked like that. And I still got homies over there right now. And yeah, this this has been unbelievable, man. I like I don't focus on my Wikipedia page. Resume. I'm like, nigga, I'm. I can't believe I'm on another airplane. Nigga. I'm looking out the window like, shit, this shit, great. Where we going? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this shit. This shit is mind blowing. Mm. All of it. Basketball season is over and football is looming. It's never too early to start thinking about the gridiron, and my partners at DraftKings are helping you get into the football action. This year, Best Ball on DraftKings has a $10 million prize pool up for grabs. Sign up now using my promo code SMOKE and get your first $10 entry fee back in DK dollars once the draft is finished. To start playing Best Ball, download the DraftKings app. Sign up using code SMOKE, enter DraftKings Best Ball $10 million contest, and draft your team for the season. There are no ads, drops, or trades. You'll be able to enjoy the fantasy football action without a need to manage your team. The team with the most points by the end of the season will take home the $1 million top prize. Head to DraftKings app and sign up with the promo code SMOKE and start playing best ball today. Enter the $10 million challenge with the best ball contest and you'll get your first $10 entry back in DK dollars. Only at DraftKings with code SMOKE. Buying tickets can be stressful, from finding them last minute, to hunting down the best price, to competing with other buyers for popular events. Your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is a fast, easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets, the best price is guaranteed, you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped about the fun you'll have. I love browsing through the Game Time app and finding the best summertime concerts and basketball games in LA. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals for tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantees you'll always have the best price. If you get tickets in the same section or row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account using the code SMOKE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code SMOKE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Late 90s, you signed your first uh, deal with a major record label. How'd that come about? 
That was after the Coke commercial. You okay. know, that's when labels existed. <laughs> uh, so it, it, after I did the Coke commercial, one of the first people who tried to sign me was Andre Harrell, which was crazy because uh, he like literally sent niggas to my school, uh, onto my high school campus, trying to. It's like I, it was like an NBA uh, scout <laughs> courting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they was at the at the talent shows. I'll be sitting there eating lunch, a little some pizza and shit, a little brownie cake. I'll just look up. Hey, what's up, Ty? Oh shit, what, what's going? <laughs> you know, like real record label executives. Because my music teacher was in the business too. You know, he wrote "Whip It, Baby" with the with the Gap Band. So he had a lot of hit records that he wrote before he became a music teacher. So it was kind of like, who's there? Who's his teacher? So they found out Reggie Andrews and my pops and my teacher, and that's how they got access to the campus. But they was all trying to sign me. It was a 20 record label bidding war. Mm, damn. So I ended up signing, and uh, I moved out of Watts. I bought my first crib at 16, four bedroom. Two car garage. My mama co signed because you got to be 21 mm -hmm. in Cali, uh, at least to own a crib. I moved in with two Rock Wallers and a fucking uh, uh, ice chest and not one piece of furniture. And I was just in there. And it was the start of me feeling like something is happening. And the craziest thing is. When I bought that crib, it was because I had a conversation with one of the big homies who never had no money, never, you know. And he's like, hey, nigga, listen, when you get this money, don't be another shoulda, woulda, coulda. I looked at him, I was like, I'm like, what's that mean? Don't, don't be able to say you shoulda, you woulda, and you coulda. Invest your money, buy a crib. Even if you lose the motherfucker, just go do something. Don't just be out here buying rims and jewelry and doing goofy shit. <laughs> so when he said that to me, bro, like literally you just never know what conversation one of the big homies can have and what effect it can have on you. He said that to me, and I, I, bought, I bought my first crib at 16 in Hawthorne, uh, right off the golf course, gated community car, traditions at the Greens. All my neighbors were my grandparents. <laughs> Straight up. You play golf? <laughs> no. <laughs> like ADD. Jack, Jack, Jack live on the golf course, don't play golf neither. No. Uh, <laughs> your first True. title album. That's album. my big bro right there, man. I pray. Like, every, and I promise you, this guy right here, before I even met this guy, I was like, yo, that's my digger right there. <laughs> Straight up. I'm talking about, I'm seeing the documentaries and all that. Like, your responses, like, Oh, I was like, yo, that's like, I I promise I know this nigga right here. <laughs> <laughs> I sent them a DM on the gram like, yo, man, I don't know, you know what I mean? I ain't, you can't talk no sports and shit with me, nigga. If you don't want to pull up, nigga. And I pulled up. <laughs> he like a motherfucker. <laughs> pulled right up ATL. on it. ATL. Yes, sir. That's crazy, yeah. Uh, how, was it, how was it putting together your first uh, self-titled album? What was that process like? Weird, you know, because... I I wasn't a uh, third generation singer. My grandma sung, mama sung, and now I'm a singer. You know, I never, there was no reference whatsoever to the blueprint. So wear these clothes, sing these songs, shoot these type of videos. And it was like, you know, I would, I can't, I'm not here to argue and debate what direction I'm going in. I don't know if I'm supposed to be singing and dancing like Genuine, mm -hmm. songs like Pony or Usher, <laughs> what you make me want to leave. You know, I'm like, nigga, am I supposed to be out here giving niggas shoulders? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I ain't know what the fuck was. I was like, nigga, I, I don't really know what, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like. What was your go-to? I mean, I was just. I was just kind of listening to whatever they was, you know. I I didn't really, I didn't really know who I was to be able to argue about. No, I ain't feeling that song. Like all y'all know more than me, supposedly. So 
you know, I'm glad I listened because, uh, shit, something got figured out. Um, you know, I tell niggas a story all the time that my struggle, especially after all that I just shared about being in the hood, my struggle was even though I was singing, nothing about singing in the hood is, you know, soft ass nigga, you know what I mean? Just, <laughs> you, know, you could be the NBA, NFL prospect all day. You could even run track and, and still have niggas out here looking at you like he good. <laughs> you gonna be out right with the ooh, yeah. <laughs> Big teeth ass nigga, sit down, <laughs> singing. You know that the homies wasn't wasn't homies wasn't sure. It was almost weird for the homies that I grew up with to show up to a talent show. Like you know these <laughs> niggas sitting on front row. Go ahead, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what what one of the big homies gonna say to cheer me on? <laughs> he gangsters of all. He got <laughs> he got some shit in his back. He looking to the left and the right, and I'm on stage singing what? Go ahead, nephew. You know, put, go ahead, nephew. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everything. Sing it with your chest, nigga. Yeah, sing that shit. <laughs> sing it with your chest. Yeah, sing it with your penis in your chest, nigga. Sing that shit. Marvin Gaye ass, nigga. <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass ass, nigga. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was me just really trying to figure out, like, and I knew. I knew that this was like a a feeling, like this music shit is really never wanted to act, ever. But this music shit, bro, that shit hit me like boom. So I was like, the energy from the homies, like I said, and being in the hood and cripping in the blood and nothing about getting on stage trying to hold any kind of note is welcome here and I wasn't no church dude that was singing in the hood like you know I went to church all the time my mom but I wasn't a singer in the choir leading the choir so the homies in the neighborhood were like oh boy you killed it yesterday it just came out the blue and just trying to understand what is this unexpected gift how do I protect him what do I do with it and uh yeah so that's that's kind of how it happened, man. So the, the first album with Sweet Lady and Lately, and I mean, I, I that my first album came out in '98. I just sold out twelve thousand two days ago, and all they want to hear is Sweet Lady mm -hmm. and Lately. I'm like, shit, man. I be on when I come out on stage. I just be looking at all them people like. I just turn around like, who the fuck is all these people like? I don't drop albums that often to matter in music like that, but they want to hear that shit. So I, I just, everything is unbelievable, man. That's all I can say. I got a funny story. I, I, can I tell this funny story? Please, Please do. do. <laughs> so he, he said he didn't sing in the choir. So I did, but this was, this was my career. <laughs> yeah, so like, let's go. So this was my career ended. So I had his two, two cousins, right? They were meant to sing and lead songs, right? And I used to always hang with them, so the choir director felt like, okay, you know, June and Pop always lead the song. Let's let's let Stevie do, you know, get. This. How old were you? I was about 13, 14. Let's let's go and get them get them a part in the song, right? So they was the ones that really was meant for this. They can ah, they they had all that, right? KC, like, oh, that. they killing it. They can preach the preacher voice. So they leading the song. They kill it. They get him. They ah, and they pass it to me. So this is my moment to show I belong uh, with them. No. And I tried to, ah, boy, mm. I, nothing came out. Mm. But like I, try, I, and I tried it again. Coughed I just had to pass the mic. <laughs> so that, you know what I'm saying? So like, it ain't meant for everybody to sing in the church choir. On stage, no. it, was, it, was, it was church, the oh, three o'clock service. Church. It wasn't mm. even 11, yeah. it was the three o'clock service at another church. Mm. <laughs> I, I tried to, ah, and I didn't have it. Yeah. Mm. That was pre backwood that, too, huh? What did you say it was called? Oh, he coughed up a loogie. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what I did. And that, and that, yeah, I, I tried. I tried that. And I didn't uh, have that. that shit I didn't just that. roll over like it was possible. I just passed the mic. I just passed the yeah. mic, and that was mm -hmm. the end of my singing career mm -hmm. in the church choir. That's when you knew. Yeah. It wasn't what, meant for me. What was next? We had one that's dark skinned <laughs> nigga on TV too that was killing KC. KC made us all think we could sing. Like we finally got a nigga that looked like us out there killing. <laughs> Every time I close my eyes. Yeah. 
<laughs> shit, nigga. Yeah. I think we could all do it, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of light skinned niggas is killing me. Like, I'll be sure. It's like dark skinned niggas didn't have a shot in the dark. Nigga. <laughs> Elder Barge. Nigga, KC came out that motherfucker with the hat backwards with that big ass vein coming out his neck. I said, nigga, I think I might have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> What was the scene like when you came out? Who was who? Who was who at that time? Whether it be oh, individuals man. or groups. Shit, where shit? It was uh, next. Um, there was a singer named Rome, um, SWV, uh, Usher, Genuine. Uh, Rome, I remember Rome. Every time I see your face, yeah. you make me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So the competition was thick, bro. And, uh, you know, I went to the gym and shit. Like, I'm like, I'm going to try and find some muscles. Uh, it was, I just, I was just in this process, man, of just like unraveling and trying to discover everything in real time. I had no coaches. I had nobody sitting me down, teaching me the game. And, you know, I just had bits and pieces of moments. I figured out little communities. Like, oh, you sing, I sing. Like, yeah, we should... You know, but when I when I think about like when you be you know when you upload videos and clips of your sons with the coach, the dribbling and just anything, and you're there as a a legend NBA and you you pouring into your 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 twins and you know it's like I ain't have the you know Teddy Pendergrass as your father, so you singing is inevitable. I didn't have no nothing. So rather I ultimately made it or not, there was no gateway into you're going to be successful because I did it and you're going to do it better than me. It was, I'm, I'm the alien of the family. I'm one of one of one. It never happened before me or after me. And imagine that pressure. Mm. And I'm still out here just fighting to maintain this unexpected gift. Mm. So, yeah. Fast 10 on the way. Mm. Uh, talk to us what it's been uh, been like for you as you talk to, you know, living this dream. I mean, to, to, to be in this uh, this series with this group of people for this long and, and continue to uh, do it. Uh, that, man, listen, man. God is, God has a sense of humor. Yeah. There's no way anybody can tell me that my first movie would be Baby Boy that was written for Pac. Pac was supposed to be Jody. He he got killed in Vegas and John Singleton, rest in peace, shelved Baby Boy. And for Baby Boy to be my first movie, which is why I had Pac on the mural in my bedroom, uh, and then to go from Baby Boy to Too Fast, Too Furious, extremely hood and extremely white and mainstream. Ah, it's, it's like, what? this is all crazy. So Vin Diesel and Paul obviously did part one, which I had nothing to do with. I came in for part two. The opportunity for part two only happened because they couldn't make a deal with Vin Diesel. I said, nigga, I do the shit for per diem. <laughs> <laughs> I do for I do this shit for a turkey sandwich with some cheese on it. Nigga, like this shit is incredible. Uh, <laughs> so when I got the phone call that you know they couldn't make a deal with Van or the first director uh, named Rob Cohen that 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 got the franchise off the ground, I was just like, wait, so you want me to do the whole movie? opposite Paul, the way Van did the whole first one opposite Paul, that's crazy. Uh, and how did y'all make the connection that Jody <laughs> right. could do anything that's got to do with Roman? Like, it wasn't one white person in our movie. Mm-hmm. It was nothing about me that said pop, mainstream, crossover. I'm a, I'm, nigga, I'm three minutes ago I was on. <laughs> It watch like, like everything about my energy has nothing to do with white people. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm like, I you put me opposite the whitest white man there is. Rest in peace to Paul, but he's the surfer. He's like <laughs> literally that guy. 
Uh, and so I, my brain was like trying to make the connection and then there's God again. Just like, I got all of this in mind for you beyond anything that you could ever see or foresee for yourself. And I'm just in autopilot, just like, okay, you know? Um, so yeah, man, like, the first one came out 23 years ago. Now we got Fast 10. So I did part two. I wasn't in three, I wasn't in four. And then me, The Rock, all was in part five. And I've done five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we about to do two more. Mm. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Shit, mm. I, I don't care if I'm in the movie for three minutes or three hours. It should change my life forever. You know, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's something else, bro. Like we just came back from Rome, doing the international press junket, first time in the history uh, of of movie premieres. They was at the actual Coliseum as our backdrop. They, they just thought that shit was Photoshop. <laughs> I'm turning around like, man, you know, it's like it's all. You took the legend Kimberly, which uh, oh, you took Kimberly, the legend, Mama Kim, yeah, you took a witch. I seen that. Yes, sir. My mom passed. Shout out to her. Yeah, shout out to Kim. Mama Kim, I love you. Changed my life, man. Yeah, I was, uh, my mom's passed last year. Rest in peace on Valentine's Day of all days. And I'm like, wow, so you give birth to an R&B singer and you die on the most romantic day in the world? That's, I got to process that one. That's that's heavy. Uh, but yeah, man, I... I you know, I had a, a real rocky relationship with my mom growing up. You know, she drank for like 27 years and childhood was real crazy. Uh, but I loved her because I know she did her best. And I was her fourth child and she could have decided, I already got three, so yeah, and let me go on and get rid of him. So she, she, she pushed me out, two boys, two girls, and, and here I am. <laughs> All the smoke in the flesh, <laughs> yes, sir. In the flesh, um, Luda spoke to the closeness of that cast and crew that you guys are really like family off the camera. Uh, can you speak to the importance of just them as people? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's definitely a vibe. I mean, I don't, I don't really know. Like when we all first started doing it. I feel like we all linked up way more often than we do now, but it's all love. Like it's it's like only thing I can connect it to is like you ain't got no problem with none of your homies you grew up with, but you look forward to the class reunion every year. You know what I mean? So <laughs> we texting, got a little text chain energy, and we all you know the kids will get together for birthdays and certain holidays. But then we all on the set, man. Busy, it feels right? like Living. a real class reunion, uh, and it just it it is hard to believe that we get as much as we get done because we laughing and joking and having so much fun. Uh, but we're all very clear, like yeah, the money is flying, the champagne is 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 flying, but we're under a lot of pressure because we're working on something that a lot of people are anticipating. And that shit can be very stressful, especially being around Ven, because he's definitely got at least 10 more of these motherfuckers in his head <laughs> right now. <laughs> so you could talk to Ven and you'd be like, yo, did you catch the last 45 minutes of what I just said? Because he's on some genius shit. He's way, way... He's already casting who's going to be in the next three. <laughs> yep, tell him oh, to keep me in mind. Yeah, he's, yeah. Me in there. he's got to show up a set with your, with your baby bro. Yeah, man, for sure. Baby, <laughs> yeah. Know, it's no Roman, Roman, ain't, Roman ain't went home yet. That's yeah. what I just, yeah. I was just, I was like, look here, man. Cousin, cousin yeah. Jesse. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah cousin Jesse. Like, we did the premiere Fast 10. We got Roman in Rome. Shit. Ain't nobody ever met my brother, my cousin, cousin my Jesse. mom, my yeah. pop. Yeah. You ain't never follow Roman home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Van has actually been talking about that shit. He's like, yo, man, what is what is what is Rome, where does Rome live? I said, well, for one, we already established that me and Paul Walker 
from Barstow. But there's hoods in Barstow. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe we got to figure that out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, they literally, they was just, it's been a couple of years of them having conversations about like where, where does Roman Tej live? You know, mm -hmm. you see Van is dating Michelle. We've already had kids and he dating this girl, Michelle. And, you know, they've unpacked the home life, but all the rest of us somehow end up in this backyard <laughs> <laughs> at the dinner table with yeah. where y'all niggas go from? Must have came from home. <laughs> How we so, always, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, uh, I appreciate the food, man. I got, yeah. I got the couch. See, y'all niggas don't want me, my mama, man. <laughs> my, my, my mama them, my, my mama them. My mama them. <laughs> so, yeah, they been, they been unpacking that conversation, man, and, uh, I think they gonna get to it at some point. Be ready. Random question that just came to me. Forgive yeah. me. In Baby Boy, mm -hmm. when Snoop kicked your son's fort over and said "fuck your fort," did your son ever tell you how he felt? <laughs> Fuck your pussy. <laughs> what he did, said did, about did his you, fort. Did your son ever tell you how he felt about Who's Snoop that? kicking his fort down? <laughs> Fuck I wasn't fort, even man. on the set that day. <laughs> Fuck your fort, Fuck man. your <laughs> fort, little Nick. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wasn't on the set that day, man. I was wondering uh, maybe if he told you later or just, <laughs> just ever. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a that, that was a high thought. Forgive no, me. No, no, no. We good. Man. Fort, we, we needed that. We needed that. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't Fuck even on the set later. that day, man. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Boy, man. Set, that's funny, man. man. You stupid, bro. Yeah, that's that's funny. Oh. Uh, mm. we, like we had Lou on the show today. Yeah, and he talked about um, John Singleton's greatness. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that as well? Uh, where do we start, man? I mean, I I would describe John as uh, a kindergarten teacher. Or uh, uh, a head start teacher, you know, when you when you when you when you drop your baby off, and they're getting their first round of classroom and education. He had the patience, as a filmmaker, to teach you and show you everything that has to do with acting. Uh, did it for Cube, did it for two, I mean, the list is 30, 40, and it wasn't just the actors and that he put on, the amount of camera operators, you know, Ruth Carter, who just won her second Oscar. She was our stylist for Baby Boy. She was our stylist for Four Brothers. Four Brothers, it was a dope movie. Uh, now she's designing and winning her second Oscar for mm. Black Panther. So John Singleton, man, he came here uh, and God, God used this man to change everything. Everything is different after he came and went. It's like all of us are still on. Regina King, Regina Hall, Cuba Gooding Jr., Lawrence Fishburne. It's Neil everybody's, Long. yeah, Neil Long, producing, writing, something and some executives that stu I mean bro he's got like 30 different 40 people that's in the academy that's able to vote for who should win an Oscar bro when I got to the set of baby boy uh it was all black people in every category on the set and then I went from baby boy to too fast too furious and because that was my introduction to Hollywood, I'm like, steady cam, lighting, grips, electron, all of these departments were all black people. And so he normalized, he's like, yo, if you're capable of doing the job, I'm not gonna exclude you. Because at the time, everything about excluding us from all departments was very real. So when you the boss and you can put your people on that's very capable of doing the job. I ain't no some niggas. You're like, mm, look out, you ain't that good, but you know. Yeah, it's like he like he's got there's there's some giants out here, you know, that cut hair, do makeup, and blah, blah, blah. So he just made sure that everybody in every department was on. And uh and then to go from that to my second movie, Too Fast, Too Furious, 
it was just like, wow, got it. Shit, man, he changed my life forever, man. Like I'm talking about, I don't even, I don't even understand why he had so much in mind for me, man. Like, yo, you the one. He used to always say, man, you you, you remind me of Pac, man. You, he's, and I, I, I couldn't even process that because I think of Pac the way I think of Pac, uh, the way we all did here on the West Coast, but it was, he just kept saying it. And then when I hung out with his moms one time in, in North Carolina, uh, me and my ex was about to divorce, mother of my first child, and she was the godmother to my first daughter, Shayla, and we went to her ranch for like two weeks. And she was a chain smoker, and she said to me 10 times that I, like, oh, she did, all these niggas running around here, all trying to sound like my son, look like my son, but you, you the only one that really remind me of my son. And it's kind of scary. I know you didn't come here for that, but oh my God, you know, and, and just like hearing that and then making the connection that of all the people that John could have casted, he said, you remind me of, and I didn't have the acting chops to justify him putting me in baby boy. I was baby boy. I'm number one on the call sheet. I wasn't number three, number four. It's your first acting role. We're not gonna make you the star, my nigga. Pay your dues and we're gonna give you a little walk on, see how you do, and then we'll give you a bigger role after. I was baby boy. And it was because he made the connection to Pac. Now I'm not Pac, so before y'all niggas jump in my comments, right. just shut up. <laughs> Goofy ass niggas. Right. What are you trying to say, nigga? Shut up. Right. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it was it was it was it was really interesting, man. It's like her, his mom said, you vocal, you outspoken, you know, you got some panther energy on you. You, mm -hmm. you, you. you speak up and speak out about real shit that matters. You ain't afraid of somebody saying, we ain't gonna hire you because you trying to speak up on some shit going on in the hood with police brutality, excessive force and racism. Always been vocal and outspoken off top. And you know, when you first get on in Hollywood, you know, they're in jeopardy of of putting somebody like me on, mm -hmm. you know, because you know what you gonna say, yeah. and how irresponsible are you, <laughs> even though you new to this. Right. Uh, so yeah, man, it was it was wild. John Singleton is my forever hero, man. That man, man changed my life forever, forever. Snoop Dogg. Yeah. I was working with him, and you have any funny stories from being on set with him? He came he came here and I think he had the longest episode maybe of all the smoke. He sat on there that same couch, laid but down. he laid down and right. smoked the, for about like two hours and just told us stories. But you have any funny stories from him being on set? Uh fuck your fort. Hey dog, you stupid. <laughs> you stupid, dog. <laughs> fuck your fort, Lily. Uh, <laughs> funny <stupid>. stories. <laughs> I don't know if I have any funny stories, man. I I mean, when I'm around Snoop, nigga, I'm nervous. Mm hmm I'm starstruck as a motherfucker. That's one of the big homies for real from yeah, the West. Like, yeah. uh, you know, I I don't care. I mean, we, we be on FaceTime and shit. He'll call me out, what's up, nephew? I'll be like, oh shit, this motherfucker's stupid. You know what I mean? Like, still. I'm still a regular, you know, South Central LA mm -hmm. that before there was a Marvel, you know, our superheroes was them. They was doing shit that. It's like the Impalas, the girls, the parties, the pool parties, the smoking, the drinking, the life, the clicks, the entourage, the going to the concerts and seeing niggas sell out arenas and we ain't had no idea what kind of money they was making, but shit, everything about what we was doing beyond selling, banging, cripping and blood and they created a you know, Easy E, they was like, yo, you could rap. You could, because I, I guess at the time I was too young to know, like, everything about hip hop was on the East. Mm -hmm. So once, once, you know, Easy E and Too Short and all that shit started happening for the West, it became some other shit that, you know, in the hood, we like, oh man, nigga, maybe we can get on some rap shit. 
And 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 so yeah, man, I've I've done some legendary backyard parties at my crib. And every time, hey nigga, I'ma pull up on you, you know. I'll be like, and then he'll get out his sprinter, and I'm just like, it's like I hear music. Oh, you know, like fucking Snoop, man. So hey, that's his, uh, uh, just, I ain't got no funny story. I just be nervous around the big To speak homie. to you, to, to speak to your legendary back backyard parties, back in my good, my back in my go days, I didn't grab a couple, a handful oh, of them. Yes, Oof. sir. Yes, Bless sir. You. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, the ratio. I know, 40, I know, bro. I know what you're capable of. Uh, unbelievable. Right. I know what you're capable of. Mm. <laughs> ratio was right, forty to one. Man, that right. motherfucker. Hey, that boy had the backyard laid out. Yeah, it was right. It was right. It was all the way right. Two thousand seven. Mm -hmm. You land a major role in Transformers. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Crazy. Still had the uh, one of the Transformers in his crib. Not at the time. Not at the time. Yeah, I yeah. got it all after. Yeah. But yeah, see my Transformer tattoo right there? Mm hmm. Yeah, I grew up watching Transformers, man. So you grew up watching the high. Now it's you... crazy. Like, I'm. they don't got to tell me nothing about Autobots versus Decepticons. Was it's, on it. It, it was Lucky Charms. And, you was telling and, them and, shit. And the under rules for me. That was like, <laughs> this shit's like. <laughs> yeah. That's not how I'm that like, went. This shit was crazy. They're like, nigga, I, you, want to, you want me to talk to Optimus? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> 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 yeah, that, that was like crazy, bro. Like, ah, I, like I said, man. And I working just, with Michael Bay, of course. Oh, man. Oh. So here's a here's a Michael Bay story. Uh, let me think about this for a second. If I ever told this story publicly, no better time nah. than now. Got to tell a quick Michael Bay story. So, first thing, uh, when we were doing uh, Too Fast, Too Furious, the whole Too Fast, Too Furious was filmed in Miami. Uh, and while we was doing Too Fast, Too Furious, they were shooting Bad Boys 2. So Will Smith and Martin and I, been knowing Martin because I did a guest appearance on Martin when he had his a TV uh, mm -hmm. sitcom. One of the greatest shows ever. Yeah. Of all time. Yeah. Uh, I stopped watching TV after that, Married with Children and Oz. I was too dumb <laughs> TV. Uh, so uh, I know him. Love them both. They every time they would get around me over the years, they would always like, for whatever reason, just go above and beyond, just trying to put me up on game and and protect me from myself. Uh, so I I you know I hit Will. I got invited to the set of Bad Boys, and even though our budget was nice, that shit was crazy. <laughs> what what they was doing right. So fast forward. Uh, uh, the Maloof brothers uh, opening their first hotel in um, Vegas. That shit used to jump. Which, which palms, one? Palms. 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 That yeah. shit used to jump. So, whew, for the grand opening, they put like 75 some celebs on, on, on these private planes from LA just to be there for the grand opening. So, literally, I get on the plane and I'm on this private joint, just like, oh shit, private plane. Uh, it's crazy. And then uh, right as the door was about to close, Michael Bay come walking on. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I know exactly who the fuck this guy is sitting there. I'm talking about, man, I'm talking about right here, okay, on the plane. So I'm sitting there, shook his hand, cool vibe. He remembered me from coming to the set with Will and Martin. And then uh, I asked him a question. I was like, let me ask you something, man. Are you aware of how many people in Hollywood say you're like arrogant, you this, you that, and this? And I guess the question was like the last thing he expected me to ask him. But you can tell just on some real shit, he was like, yo, I appreciate you mm. asking me a real ass question instead of like, sitting there telling me how much you love the movies I've done. Mm -hmm. I was like, so our whole hour flight was about just chopping it up about some real shit, like what people think of you versus what you think of yourself, versus what you said and what you did, what you responsible for, blah, blah, blah. That was the gist of it. 
And it was love. It was all love. So then I get to the lobby. And I've never hung out with dude. I was on the set. He was in go mode, you know, genius director, big action guy. Everything is a thousand miles an hour in his head, you know. And so seeing him when he's out of game mode, he's a whole nother person. Very cool, sociable. So I get to the front desk to check in. And as I'm walking through the lobby, because it's the grand opening, all these women was in the lobby in Vegas. And without me noticing, by the time I got to the front desk, I must have turned around. It was like 30 of them gawking and looking. And Michael Bay walked up to me. He's like, hey, man, wow, you know, like he really got excited about all this energy that was around me. And my brain was like, <laughs> my brain was like, huh, my nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, lady, you want to be my brother? Mean? Like, if this is, if this is what, if this Close is what you own, yeah, come on now. Hey, I do, dude, this, is, this is what I do. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is easy. You know what I uh, mean? Shit. I'm like, I'm the R&B nigga turn actor. Nigga. I got <laughs> juices following me this all day. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the excitement that he's feeling about the energy around me. Now, I ain't finna sit here and say I arranged anything because I ain't that nigga, but... <laughs> it was it was really like, and I was like, and then literally at the front desk was not the plan, but I felt his energy. I said, yo, man, I'm, I got some girls coming up, man. Drains is real low key, man. You ain't doing nothing. Pull up, right? Right? He's like, and then he was like, yeah, yeah. What's, you know, what's, what's your room number? You know, what's your... <laughs> so I got the key. I was like, you know, blah, 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 405, whatever it was. And then I was like, man, this nigga ain't coming. You know, he ain't, ain't no fucking way he gonna come, you know. She. Man, listen. I literally, it's the funniest shit. If Michael see this clip, he gonna be like, you, brother, I've never told nobody. <laughs> hey, hey, he, got, he got there before you. Exclusive. <laughs> no, so, so I'm literally in the room, right? I swear to God, it was at least 30 chicks in there. I didn't tell them they needed to do anything. I just said, look, man. If this man knock at my door, when he come upstairs, y'all got one job and one job only. Get me on. To just make him feel <laughs> yeah. like the most incredible motherfucker you've ever met. Yeah. And I said, look, man, I want y'all to know, there is nobody in the history of cinema who knows how to film and capture women the way Michael Bay do on some Victoria's Secret, been shooting them campaign for 30 years, blah, blah, blah. So they all up in there like, and I'm like, yo, he actually specialized and putting random women on. He don't necessarily need to be with a supermodel. He don't go for the established. He'll go and find some brand new oh, bad chick and up. make them look. Nigga, they was up in that motherfucker like, damn. They're just like, well, thank you for the opportunity. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at this. Hey, he, he gonna be happy to hang out with me. He gonna be way happy to see y'all when yeah, he get up there. Yeah, yeah. So, hey man, y'all ain't gotta do shit. Literally, I, this ain't no prostitution. Like, I ain't, I don't play them games. Yeah, not do shit, which nothing did go down. Man, drinks, girls, put some music on, vibe, had a nice little sweet. It wasn't nothing crazy. And like an hour go by, I'm walking, I'm pacing in my room, and went, but, 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 but. And I swear, man, I almost want to get up and reenact this shit, but the camera's on me. But like, if the peephole was here, nigga, I was like, I was like, oh shit, like it was like a move, like oh shit, like yo, nigga, if this motherfucker is on the side of this door when I look through this peephole, it's over, it's over. So I went, looked to the peephole, fuck. <laughs> y'all good, right? Y'all ready? Y'all yeah, ready? Position, Action. nigga. Y'all niggas do Action. Bruh, opened the door, came in. You know, he always got his little shirt just about right here, you know? <laughs> you know, he's Mr. Miami at 24. Hey, hey, man. You know, if you want something to drink, you know, they went, they went full on flirting. Like, don't worry about me. Just make sure he feels amazing when he gets here. Man, they hit that thing so far at the park. Next thing you know, got each other's number. He invited me to a Christmas party. That's up the street, by the way, here in Santa Monica. And uh, 
hung out with him. He's like, hey, man, uh, I got this movie I'm about to do. I'm thinking about doing it. You know, Steven Spielberg hit me up. And he's mentioning Spielberg like this normal. I'm like, he's <laughs> Spielberg. You know, he wanted to direct it. And he was like, well, you, maybe you should do it. He's like, what do you think, man? I said, Transformers? I mean, are you best, best childhood for me. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you think I should do it? He's like, fuck yeah, man, it'll be crazy. He's talking to me like as if me saying he should do it is going to actually make him do it. <laughs> I'm like, well, shit, you're going to ask me? Yeah. So then. You know what else you should do? You should put me in it, too. Yeah, yeah. That's what, <laughs> then, he, then he said, this was funny. Uh, he said, uh, he's, he's like, yeah, would you do a movie like that? I'm like, yeah. I'm trying. I'm like, I'm so fucking fired up, but I'm trying to play it cool. Like, yeah, man, I do some shit like that. You know what i Crazy, I grew up on that, man. I'd be crazy. You would kill that shit if you did it. And then he said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, Are you funny? I said, Yeah, 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 I'm funny. I don't, I mean, I'm just can't really tell you I'm funny, but I, you know, yeah, I've, I've been known to, to, to keep niggas' attention and tell a good joke or two, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and, and so he invited me back to his office. I walked in his office, the whole room was full of images because it's all computer generated. It's all of these images of the cars and the bumblebee before and after the this, you know, the Optimus Tron truck and all of these images. And he's like, come in, man. And I'm looking, I'm like, what the, you know, I'm looking at my childhood. So he wanted to cast me in the first Transformers to play Bernie Mac, the car salesman who sold Shia LaBeouf's character, mm -hmm. the first Bumblebee, mm -hmm. if anybody's seen it, mm -hmm. that was supposed to be me, Bernie Mac. Mm -hmm. And after hanging out with him several times, he literally, sweat, he literally created the role, Nest, and had me with Josh Dumel, the soldiers, and we end up doing three Transformers. I would have been grateful for the Bernie Mac role, but for him to like, yo, I really like you. You a good guy. He looks like he literally out the sky. We had nothing to do with the storyline. He created the Transformers soldiers that work and rock with Shia LaBeouf's character. And all of that shit happened from an airplane ride. Mm. And all these women at the fucking hotel. What's the name of the hotel? The Palm. The Palm. They did their job. They 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 put me ladies, on the plane. Ladies, if you happen to see it, shout out, ladies. Good work. Great job. Great job. Great job. Yeah, 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 yeah. If y'all see this interview. Thank you. Good job. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Hold them down. <laughs> what fans are the most loyal, Transformers or Fast and Furious? Uh, well, I don't do Transformers no more, so it's definitely Fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got three out of it. I hope I can do it again, man. That'd be, that'd be crazy to, to run that back. But... Um, my focus right now, honestly, man, I'm I'm on my music shit, mm -hmm. man. It's been ten years since I dropped an album. You know, my last album was called Black Rose, and I've been in the studio, man. Just like, really, like, it's it's hard for me to accept that the year is 2023 right now. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm in '68 right now in my head. I'm I'm. I, I, I was just at the club last night, Studio 54, Marvin Gaye, Teddy, Michael Jackson, uh, just played a, a new song last night, shut the club down. Uh, that's where my head is. I'm like, I'm literally in the 70s, tapping into that vintage retro R&B soul. Uh, you know, my album is called Beautiful Pain, so, uh, I, I've been I've been in the studio just in, you know, it's almost like method acting. I'm like deep, deep in my R and B bag right now, R and B soul bag. Like nobody could tell me that Barry Gordy wasn't just at my house last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, how you've, you know, s being in the spotlight, a lot of your private. Problems become public, yeah. similar to me. Yeah, um, all of us. What is it? What have you learned? I guess. I, I guess from that, um, 
Can you laugh? I mean, they created a meme. Can you laugh about stuff like that? What have you learned? I mean, I'm someone very similar where my divorce was public and what mm -hmm. happened after was public. Yeah, and then yeah. my fight for my kids was public. Yeah. You know, obviously you've gone through some of those struggles and although it should be private moments, it's public moments. So everyone is picking at it and saying what should and shouldn't happen. How have you kind of learned and navigating kind of made yourself better from those experiences? Well, I'm glad you brought that up, man. Uh, because I think us as black men, we don't talk about it. Mm -mm. as much as we should because you know the story of my life with all of my interviews has been it's crazy how women will come down on us about not talking not communicating not expressing any of their feelings and sentiments and then as soon as we do then now we soft or moaning bitching crying whatever you know it's like damn if you do damn if you don't so i've always been beyond expressive uh written two books i got fucking youtube videos in the thousands with my motivational inspirational videos that i put out just like getting it off of me um the truth is uh y'all come from the world of sports there's nothing about my life that comes with uh, a sports announcer Talking about well, Tyrese's performance comes in at a strong ten. The last performance with it, 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 it tried, but it didn't land. You know? <laughs> it, they, I don't deal with that as an R and B nigga. We deal with radio hosts and on air personalities, but everything about this life that I live, I am growing up in real time, mm -hmm. and I am figuring it out. I'm right. bumping my head, I'm falling, I'm making a mistake, I'm up, I'm down, I'm sad, I'm confused, I'm wondering like who the fuck and why and wondering like did you really just get in a whole relationship and just fake the whole shit to get a baby out of it when I got in this shit for real to do it for the rest of my life, bro. I took my wedding band off and I was light skin under my finger, man. Damn. That ain't the worst thing. No, it's not. No, but I'm just saying for him to say that though. <laughs> yeah. I never took my shit off, man. Yeah. Like fully in it. Mm hmm And uh so my single entitled I Don't Think You Ever Loved Me, featuring Lenny Kravitz, man. I you know, y'all probably didn't even know I had a song. I, I want y'all to hear it. All streaming platforms, Apple, Spotify, I Don't Think You Ever Loved Me, featuring Lenny Kravitz. You know, I was with her for five years. We was married almost three. Uh, didn't even get to three. And then she just pulled the plug on the marriage. And I'm literally over here uh, just seeing my whole shit <laughs> go up and smoke. And I'm over here pulling out a human calculator just trying to add it all up. And, you know, my, my whole thing has always been... Uh, I've never been the kind of entertainer uh, or public figure that wants to sell you on the success of it all. I'm gonna tell you everything. Don't don't look up to me because of the shiny building. Don't don't love me because of the drop head. Love the nigga in the car mm. that happens to be driving a drop head. It's always been just the opposite for me. I got the shit. That's gonna make everybody like, yo, that's, but I want you to say, yo, that's a man of integrity. He's honest. Uh, he allows himself to be vulnerable and go into those uncomfortable conversations that most people never feel safe with having. And, 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 you know, most people, first of us, us as men, we've been forced to shut up. You know, women have went above and beyond to express themselves and be expressive. And we don't really feel safe with talking about our actual feelings, childhood traumas, the shit we've seen but exposed to, them places that we could all slip into uh, knowing that the, the, the answer is not in a, in a, in a medicine bottle. Uh, Sometimes Jesus ain't enough for, for us, you know what I mean, with, with, with what we're feeling. Uh, and the concept of Jesus is like, well, how do I apply that into and then I'm like, got it. 
got it because it's confusing i don't i don't wake up with no ill will and no malicious intent you would expect a nigga with money power access to the streets to corporate america to the lawyers you would expect me to be the one to say i got the power and i'm gonna become abusive with my power but i find myself being on the receiving end of what niggas trying to do to me mm. and i'm like damn i got the power to do it to you and probably can get away with it but i don't have them intentions so it makes dealing with these type of things in real time it 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 it, it, it hits you harder because i'm like damn what I could do, I don't do, but then everybody seems to be doing I'm not sitting there playing victim, but it, it's crazy, man. Uh, and yeah, that's that's my answer, man. Like, I, it, these California courts is, is mm. on some fuck shit. Vicious. Like, 100. Like, Vicious. man, listen, man, uh, 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 get married out of state, have your baby out of state, <laughs> and y'all come live out here all you want. <laughs> But uh, don't don't do it. They, you know that that diso master mm, on One Eleven Hill Street. <laughs> fuck your life up, Jack. Out of all of us, who you think pay the most child support? Me by far. Nigga. You? Not even close, man. <laughs> Where you at? Where you so at, you Jack? Chip, huh? Where you at? Jack you got at? eleven kids. I got no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, don't. I don't know what to say. You got to love kids. We don't even got to talk about that number. I got, I got, I got five girls, two boys. But I, I paid eighteen five for one. This is one child in California. I paid eighteen five for one child for my whole NBA career. Eighteen five. Yeah, that's just one child. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, to you, your question. You got six more of them? Yeah, and around that range too. Yeah. What wow, about but, the ones yeah, that yeah, God yeah. is good? He blessed me with enough. Yeah, 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 you yeah. But he, he's not supposed to bless you to give it away. <laughs> nah, not at all. Not at all. Because yeah, see, that's the positive spin on it. God is good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> straight, up, straight up. Every month, nigga, when that, when back, that wire got to go twisted. out, man, that's some bullshit, yeah. bro. Yeah, nah. Because we already know that. If we actually talk about the actual needs of the child, it's not being met. It's it's, it's, it's hey, all hey, it's random. It's beyond being met. Hey, so right. you know that 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 bag is not for the child. Right. It's hey. for yeah. Hey, random you know, extracurricular hey. activities. Hey. Up, man. So, L.A. boy, I tell you, they tough. pour the lip shaft fillers down. and Botox and all this shit they hey, be doing on the cool. So, uh, <laughs> the summer I retired after I was done playing, I stayed in for a uh, nigga's outfit to go on I other dates. I stayed up on. Uh, I stayed up in uh, Beverly Hills. <laughs> Fuck is going on, nigga? You got hey. the Hermes out on, nigga. That's, that. that's, that's the point of my story. So I ran into Russell Simmons, and me and him started hanging out. And I really pissed the idea to have like a, a child support car. Like he had the rush card, and I'm like, you need to create a car where you have to see like every time they swipe, it has to you see the receipt, so it sees if it goes towards the children. Mm. And I really pissed that shit. Too. Yo, I don't remember what happened I, yo, to him. They need, we but need yeah. to go to Congress. But if on. someone, yeah, dope. if someone could think of that, if someone could come up with that, just give me a little cut of that. No, how about the yeah? That, the, we can call hard. that shit uh, Man. Uh, the it's, CS I mean, I'm, card. I'm damn near done, so it's really going to help me paint. will help me <laughs> hey, right me. now. CS Money gone. Card, the child Money support gone. card. We, we got to yeah. see where all that is. I make yeah. my child support payment. It gets <laughs> wired onto the card, and every time you swipe, you get to see we the need receipt. to see what's happening. Yeah. Someone can make that. Because that 18.5 ain't got no Nobu and Malibu vibe on that. Mm -hmm. No, Because no. the kids ain't coming in here with you. No purses. No, no, no. No shoes. No, no shoes, handbags. Yeah. Cars, up. vacations. <laughs> yeah. That shit hurt, bro. That's For real. And then you go up in the courtroom. It don't matter what receipts, what paper trail, what you show up with to prove that Got to cut that check, man. <laughs> Regardless, straight and up. That, I'm gonna tell you, man. A man. I'm still bleeding. You born, I'm, man, I'm bleeding right now. <laughs> I'm bleeding. I see your blood. It's <laughs> fucked up. And I match you. Up. I match you two drops. Yeah. yeah. And that. that, that but up. but imagine, imagine. Don't matter, NBA or singer, actor. Imagine that this is common knowledge. You walk into the courtroom, and if you was born a man. You got a preset McDonald's menu. You're going to get the shaft and balls. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Tax returns. <laughs> fuck you and anything you got to say. Mm -hmm. Now, when you ain't getting no money, you a deadbeat. Yep. But then when you getting money, you get fucked. Yep. 
damn if you damn, do, damn, 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 damn if you do, damn if you don't. You and, and what you gonna do? Go on the internet and cry about it? Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What more do you want from me? Yeah. I want my soul back, That's motherfucker. It, man. Uh, Come on, man. <laughs> uh, Straight up. I just like I, you know, I, I, I wanna. I'm, I'm always gonna take care of mine. Right. I'm not with her no more. Ain't no way my baby need all that. I know what we was doing for her while we were together. So what you about to do with all that monthly hmm. that we wasn't doing for the baby monthly mm. when I'm the nigga with mm. the bag? Mm. The mm. baby never had 18.5 worth of anything per month. <laughs> She's going to be doing that move. Nigga. So nigga did 18? Think about it. The Shut baby, up. Me and my wife or me and my girl never spent 18.5 on the baby while we were together. So you suddenly about to spend 18.5 because <laughs> you with the baby by yourself? My God. Cold game. It's a cold game. <laughs> you better wear a jacket. Uh, it's quick more than that. <laughs> <laughs> quick hitters. What's, 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 the, what's the pill that they take to stop themselves from getting pregnant? What's that called? Uh, Birth control? Birth control, yeah. We need, to, we need to figure that out. They got the male one now. Uh, the dude with the beard takes it. <laughs> dude with the beard takes it. You Okay. <laughs> You look a little lightheaded. You been drinking water? <laughs> yeah, you going to take that, but they ain't telling niggas about the side effects. <laughs> I'm immune to all that shit. That shit ain't going to stop me. <laughs> it don't matter. Going through it. My but shit, look, man. Yeah, my shit powerful. That ain't single to nothing. All me. love. Peace and love. But that's why they do this podcast. a safe place for us to talk about that yes. shit. And, and one thing, you know, me and him done been through it. Man, yeah. what? That's, that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, my shit done been all over the world. I mean, wow. all over the... Yeah, there's yeah. still... Every day I walk around, I, I mean, anytime I post on, there, there's still going to be comments for like the rest of my life just because yes, shit I'm played right out in the wish. public. Yeah, I be right hitting you every once in a while. Yeah, with you. you good, bro? Yeah, just checking yeah. in on you, homie. Yeah, I mean, we we have love, to. We, we, we love you. We can never yeah. assume. Bro, uh -uh. I, pulled, I pulled up on him. Have you ever been on a walk? <laughs> I've never. I've never been on a walk. Like, like around the neighborhood. No, nah, I just. But this shit was different, though, dog. So I go to his house. He's like, <laughs> talk about it. First, when I get there. I think Zell over that last. Hey, Kenyatta. Hey, first when I get there, Kenyatta, right? Kenyatta, listen to this. So first when I hit, so he tell me to come over. So first when I get there, as soon as I hit the dose, I stop up. Go this way. Over here is COVID. You got to take the COVID test. He hit me <laughs> up and said, <laughs> Hold up. yo, I really want to get up on this acting shit, man. Yeah. I really want to chop it up. So I say, yo, bro, I'm one of them niggas that will overshare. I'm not threatened and insecure about no other man getting in this game. So instead of you, like me, getting on the movie set, winging it, Bumping your head and making mistakes. Let's really chop it up about what you're trying to do because there's a lot of ways to go about it. So he pulled up and th th that's go ahead. <laughs> and he, so I do the, I do my COVID test and all that. You know what I'm saying? They had to go in that nose? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a couple it different did. Well, it, did. <laughs> it did. It did. One Q tip, does. They got it. <laughs> They got, they got it with one Q-tip. One Q-tip. They said they was, bent that one Q-tip over. It was over. quick. It was quick. So, <laughs> so they could double your shit and get it faster. <laughs> My bad. Go ahead. Nah, uh, I forgot what I was saying. No, no, no. COVID test. COVID oh, yeah. COVID testing. So take the COVID test. And I go talk to him. He sit down. Whatever. He's like, let's, let's go you know, talk. Let's take the walk. So this is my whole reason. So I walked around the block growing up. I actually walked to people's house. I'm going to take a walk. This was a real walk, bro. Yeah. Let me tell you why. Every, all the trees was green. Yeah. All the houses were nice. Yeah. And we landed in the park where it was just one bench mm. and it's just green everywhere. I'm like, this nigga taking me to heaven. <laughs> 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 Did this nigga take me on a walk in heaven? Hey, that's my nigga from childhood, bro. I literally just took him on. Where, where we ended up on that bench, right? What, wasn't Same that shit, shit. Peace Walk? Bruh. I took my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that was the, hey, I was like, okay, so this is what people mean when they say, yeah. let's take a walk, Let's bro. chop it up. That was a real walk, yeah. dog, and it was very refreshing. Yeah. I learned a lot. It was peaceful. Mental health. Oh, man, so it was, was dope, great. man. It was but dope, But that's bro. what they usually do on the golf course, because I don't play golf. You don't get around the birds and the chirping and the little lakes and creeks. and So in my neighborhood, I live in Buckhead in Atlanta. Cribs is ridiculous Crazy. and they got these big ass yards and all the way up there with the big old front you know 
And so I'm like, yo, man, one thing about where I live, it ain't some security everywhere, but it's safe, it's private. And for the first time ever in my life, it don't matter how long I've been on, I ain't never been able to take a walk in my neighborhood since I've been on. And I go here. It's not like we went a mile. Nah, it was like nah. it was there. We yeah. made a hard left. And then it, and then that ain't even the park. That's what's crazy. That's somebody's yard. <laughs> that was somebody's yard? That's somebody's yard. That's how big the man, yard that shit is. Was peaceful, dog. I said, that man, they, we went there. I was like, yo, I normally sit right here on this bench, man. It's surrounded by trees and green and get my thoughts together. Yeah. Walk right back to the crib. So the whole time we was walking, I was just trying to chop it up and really put my nigga up on game about uh -huh. this acting shit. Yep. I'm like, you know, Dope. shit, man. It's like, yeah, we supposed to sit there at the table, fireplace, this and that. This nah, that was night. way better. That was shit way better. Yeah, chopping it up, man. It's my favorite walk. <laughs> I know what it mean now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. The walk. All right, quick hitters. First thing to come to mind. Um, I mean, obviously through your your, your music, your, your acting, you've seen a lot of places. You've been around the world. Uh, three favorite cities. Man, I'm I'm still I ain't still ain't recovered from Miami. <laughs> uh, Miami is probably Miami is probably top of my list. Uh, second is Brazil, for all the right reasons. Uh, my God, my God. I heard. Yeah, yeah, you heard. Mm. <laughs> right. I've it's crazy. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, all the shit we excited about on TV, just like that. Yeah, just throw it away. Throw it away, bro. Brazil is, if you're ever thinking about getting married, settling down, just do yourself a favor. Get that out your system and then get to the crib and say, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. But, ooh, I'm glad I was able to. <laughs> it's, experience that's some, that uh, some public some service shit, announcement. It's, it, it's, I'm saying that to every real nigga out here watching. Like, you know, mm -hmm. go live it. It ain't even that expensive. It's like $430 in coach. Like, <laughs> you got it. Round trip. <laughs> it's best shit. Best shit in life. Mm. But uh, yeah, between Miami and Brazil, uh, my favorite place on earth right now, because I'm on some super privacy. When I take a break, I don't want to see people, movement, nothing. I'm heavy on my Turks and Caicos right now. Heavy. I don't want to see nothing, nobody. I take my hookah, nigga. I be sitting on my balcony. I don't go. I, I'm Turks and Caicos. I swear, man. I might. We might be three mass killings away from me saying "fuck America." I'm out. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be out there with a big ass stomach with a monkey named Bubbles, nigga, like this. <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> 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 like it's 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 you gotta you like I'm in my grown man bag, heavy. Like man, how do you feel? I'm not okay. Every time I go to Turks, whatever level of drain. My shit just always recharges, and and I, I promise, man, Turks is it. Turks is it. If you ain't never been, bless yourself. It's only two-hour flight from Atlanta, too. That's what I love. I'm like, psh, out. What's the craziest fan interaction you've had? I had a girl in my hotel room in Houston. Uh, found out where I was staying, went to the front desk, convinced the nigga at the front desk that... A key was supposed to be in her name. She was already upstairs, ready to go when I walked in the room. <laughs> Question, ah! did you go or did you send her home? No, I, I, I got out of there. It was, okay. That was a little scary for me. Anybody that's determined, you definitely got some shit in yeah. mind. A lot of plot. You got yeah, a motive. Yeah, you, you really, you, you, are, you, what do you call it, premeditated? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. your shit is way too, you convinced the nigga at the front desk. It's like, yeah. Tyrese is staying here. I know what he called it, you know, last name check. He said, you called it in, my name's... None of that shit was real. She was in the room. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. If you could have a billboard with a message, a uh, message saying slogan for the world to see, what would it be? Oh, shit. Where you know how many brothers would have went in the room like, oh, yeah, you got the key I left you, huh? <laughs> 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 uh, what was slogan? <laughs> Uh, I really feel this overwhelming sense to give it all away. Not on some charity shit. 
like cutting checks and you know the way I post, the way I communicate, everything about this interview, there's somebody that's gonna hear something and be like, oh nigga, he made it possible. He made made me think it was possible because the way he just still regular, still just, you know, something about what I do and the way I do it, I have this overwhelming sense of responsibility to just give somebody permission to 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 go get it. Uh without, you know, I don't want don't be inspired by chains and t- 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 yo, he a real but b- b- you know. So I would say the the billboard would say, Me today, you tomorrow. And I believe that without being threatened or insecure about, yo, you put me up on and I flipped that shit and turned it. If we ain't both pulling up in a Rolls Royce, bro, we ain't both in a mansion, mansion hopping. If we ain't, yo, you, you yo, what's the tail number? You know, if we ain't on that, the fuck are we doing? You know, and I, I like, I really, really want everybody to, to believe that it's possible to get it. And and wherever you at, you know what I mean? Like, it might be fuck, it might be dark, it may like everything is pulling you down and you like thinking the inevitable is. But man, the Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Yeah. And there is nothing about what you feeling carrying and dealing with right now that has anything to do with the outcome of all that God has in mind for you. If you don't believe that, just stay at it. Stay the course. It ain't enough handsome, ain't enough jokes. I don't know enough hood niggas. I ain't got nothing to connect to nothing because my brain is like, wow, so God had all of this in mind for me. And I'm out here just winging it, trying to understand it all as it's happening. You know? And wow, this is what all of this, and it's still happening. Unbelievable. Even sitting there with y'all, man, this is like, I'm, I've seen y'all podcast <laughs> for years. I'm just sitting here on the couch. This shit mm. unbelievable. We honor, we appreciate it. We honor. Yeah. So yeah, man, that's that's kind of it, bro. Question. Yes, sir. Who would you like to see on our show? But before you answer that, you have to help us get your answer on the show. I'm getting good with that question. Yeah. So you saying who would I like to see on the show? Yep. And can I help y'all to get the person on the show? Whoever you choose that you want to see on our show, you have to help us get them on the show. All right. Uh. Will Smith been on here already. Yep. Yeah. I've seen that episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, Denzel. Mm. Let's get Denzel here. Denzel. So you the second person that said Denzel, so we need both of y'all to hit him on this, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Personal uh, line? On the, on the, just on the, on the training day line. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he, he want Lonzo to answer? Yeah, I want Lonzo to pull up, because I know Lonzo yeah. going to pull up. He wasn't no punk nigga. You I know think what I'm saying? you Lonzo also... Uh, <laughs> because I know where your heart is at with the acting shit, I think you need to start inviting more actors on here I agree. to have the dialogue. Right. You know, niggas into real estate, they need to start interviewing folks that's in the world that you're trying to get in. Because right. the wisdom and the knowledge gives you the insight to be able to say, "Oh, yo, I didn't really think it was possible until somebody just broke that shit down and made it all so simple. Like it was so much more." difficult in my mind to get to that and then he just blah 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 man i experienced the best teacher free game. Yeah, yeah. that's free game merch name of my new podcast can't free let you game. leave empty handed my brother yeah, all the smoke money. gear and you can get that you 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 all you camera you people out there at all the smoke dot store you can be as fly as mid oh, met wow. and now black tie <laughs> man. man weed whacker yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Shout out Manscaped. Yeah, shout out Manscaped. Your, your grooming you purchases, know what I'm saying? Bro. I got, I, dog, yo, I think I got, yeah, this appreciate you. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Take yeah. care of you. Hey, man, before I go, man, I got to ask y'all a question, man. <laughs> For real, man. I got to ask y'all a question, man, because 
crazy thing is, I'm not going to sit in and paint no me and Kobe were the best of homies picture because that's not the story. But we both got on around the same year. You know, um, I remember because Brandy, uh, the singer Brandy and I, best of friends since 11 years old, and her and Kobe went to the prom together, right? And we was all, we all kind of got on around that same time because he went straight from high school into the league. So what was it like, man, like knowing him for real, for real? Because everything about me running to him, and it was always good vibes and conversation, but it was all like bits and pieces. I've never like hung out with him for three, four hours and just sat across like this and chopped it up. Like, what made him so different other than his skill level and all that he accomplished? Like, what what type of tiger? What like, yo, man, that motherfucker's intense. Like, was it ever like, or was it... Most most people as a teenager, especially all of us, you know, we was thinking just playing basketball, having fun, going mess with girls. Like at a young age, he had a hit list of all the top players in our class, and his he was focused on being better and destroying all of them when he seen them. At a teenager, I don't know no other no other teenager that played basketball in our era that was thinking like that. We all were having fun. We wanted the new shoes. You know what I'm saying? We wanted to be fly. He, he was thinking being the greatest basketball player of all time as a teenager. And that was his conversation. That, Dialogue. And, and, and I'm talking about from work ethic. Walkthroughs at McDonald's game. It's footage that Richard Hamilton posted on his page. We, we're doing a walkthrough. He catch the ball and swipe hard and go dunk it. It's like it's just a walkthrough, bro. So he was just different. Like his will to win and will to be great. You can't teach that, and I don't think it, you you probably won't ever see it again. But it was sparked by Jordan, yes, and his father. Yes, played. his father. Jimmy so he Bean. was able to to even identify and connect to MJ, and then he like I want to even be bigger and better. But it was a it was a constant appetite of aggression to be great. To, to be great. Yeah, I, I mean I got a chance wow. to like really really get to know him once we became teammates, and then post career. And you know, obviously, you see his greatness on the court um, and, and in his drive and will. But you know, I got a chance to see like the father, you know, the coach, um, you know, the way he looked out for people, the way he loved people, the way he tried to inspire people, and really took that, that same grind that Jackson in basketball and, and, and wanted to put it in business and and again to help people. You know, he was telling us both like the last time we talked to him. Like, I don't want to be known for my last 20 years. I'm like, nigga, you're Kobe Bryant. Five championships, Los Angeles Lakers, one of the great. He's like, I want to be known for the next 20. You know what I mean? So he was always kind of, whatever it was going to, he was going to put his mind to, he was going to be the best at. Like, that's how much. But, again, I see them cool, relaxed, talking shit, you know, back and forth. So it wasn't, I didn't know, no. I knew him in passing. I didn't know the younger Kobe. When I got a chance to meet, obviously, the older Kobe, it was just a lot different. I've I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, it's nothing bad, but I've heard that it doesn't matter how often you were around him, he just never let anybody get all the way too familiar. There was always a, you know, or was there ever like a, a, a something that felt like, oh, that they we all best friends and we all like, was it ever like- No, he know, didn't let everybody in. He didn't, let, and I even asked him about that too. I used to tell him like, why don't you show the world this? And he's like, no, I can't show these motherfuckers that. You know what I mean? So like if he allowed you to come in, and I can't even say, I would, like you said, I wouldn't say I'm super like, but he allowed me in, you know what I mean? Around him and the kids and, and, and you know, kind of the family Bye. and that kind of stuff. And he, like, he had a little MJ in him too, where he trying to get one up on everybody. Hmm. And not in a bad way. He's yeah, yeah. just thinking just wise. Competition. He, he, like he's he's Better. a thinker. He was a thinker. You know what I'm saying? Even on the court. You know what I'm saying? His game showed it, but his IQ of basketball was just as high as anybody's. You know what I'm saying? That's what people don't understand about Kobe. That's why he was so relentless. Because he can outthink you. He was already great with the ball. And when like you sometimes you guard him, you in awe. Like fucking Kobe Bryant. So he's already mind fucked you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Didn't even hit you with some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he was just different, bro. Wow. He was different, dog. Will it will there ever be a such thing in y'all mind as athletes of cause I, I don't live in that world, obviously, but like obviously Kobe is Kobe. And before Kobe, there was Magic Johnson and kind of the reign of energy. Kareem because I'm West Coast all day. So Kareem, Magic Johnson, and then Kobe. But 
as much as LeBron mean to all of us in the game, is is Kobe like that tough of an act to follow because of what he meant to us all and then the loss? Will will anyone ever be able to kind of ever feel the peak of success on that level because of the tragedy for, in for, your mind? For me, it's, it's different because I can separate the two. Like, I know how I felt about Kobe as a basketball player, as playing against him, as knowing him as a, as a kid. But I also know how my emotions shifted when he passed. So I can I look at it from, I can speak on him being an athlete and a great basketball player, but I can also speak of what we miss him by him being gone. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's I can separate the two. Uh, I mean, I think obviously LeBron's greatness is, is is LeBron's greatness, but I think you know for someone to get drafted here as, as like we he, like you said, you grew up in front of our eyes. He grew up in front of the world's eyes as well. From 17 years old to you know rode the ship until the till the ship sank when he could have jumped and went somewhere else. So I don't think anyone will ever be more impactful to the Lakers' mm. historic name than Kobe for what he meant to it, the championships he won, and then obviously the way he went out. Yeah, yeah, and we'll never see, you know, at the same time, we'll never see nothing like LeBron, ever. Kobe, Jordan, none of that ever again. Ever. So, yeah, and no. it's clear. That crazy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, LeBron, man, he a fellow Capricorn. We got the same birthday, December 30th. Mm-hmm. In my mind, he's definitely one of my best friends. That I've never <laughs> he hung said out in with. my mind. <laughs> yeah. You'll never see a LeBron James again. seeing you know? him. In the shop, man. Just like I seen this, this, this lad. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, man, that, that, that's my nigga. He just don't know it yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I appreciate y'all having yeah, me man, on. Man, appreciate the platform, here, man. man. I, I'm grateful, man. I've, I've been, I've been looking at, I've been looking at y'all, man, forever, man. I wish y'all the best, man, for Thank real. You. Appreciate, appreciate you. It. Thanks for coming to my wedding yeah. and sliding out like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no fingerprints. I gotta tell you why I slid out, man. Oh, we didn't care. We yeah, didn't care. Man, I just you, you had, your job you. was done. You did. Yeah, yeah, you I did up. my job, man. Yeah, you but, was good. But outside of that, man, the most <laughs> uncomfortable thing for me is to show up to a man's biggest and most incredible day. And steal his and joy. And make it, make it about me. Yeah. Oh. It's, hey, because they, uh, it sure was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I did my thing. Oh, man, I was like, everybody was like, where you went? Where? Right. Tyrese? He out of there. He out of there. I out slipped of there. about that, Because so he was over in the corner by me. He was yeah. singing over in the corner. It was, he was about his shit. All the wait. homies want to start crying. and <laughs> Everybody want to get up and say, man, I grew up, man. I remember when you, you know, all that. I don't want that energy to shift at me at all. That I did, you know, he asked me to sing yeah. at the wedding. I was here with Honor. I was like, I'm gonna do it. my best. Yeah. You killed it. Out of here. You killed it. You killed it. <laughs> you did right. You did appreciate right. Well, that's you, a wrap, fellas. man. Tyrese, we appreciate you. You Black catch time. us on Showtime Basketball What's YouTube up? and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. What's up? What's up? Yeah. yeah. Start the engine sometime soon, Erica. <laughs> Do you know the odds of all of us being here at this time? It's improbable. And yet, here we are, together. Hold on to your saddles. 